new engine for the rototiller arrived. Got all the metal tabs pulled out of the box. Let's open it up. Got my handy razor knife. Make unboxing this a little bit easier. Check our packing slip. Looks good. Got our manual. Output shaft protector. Pretty straightforward. Just the engine tag. One thing you want to double check when you get these, and usually they're not filled with oil, so you can pretty much just assume that you're going to have to put oil in the unit as well as gas before you fire it up. But just make sure you put oil in there. So one thing we're going to check with this before we install it on our engine, just to confirm that the bolt pattern and the output shaft diameter and length is the same as the one that we took off. So we'll do that. Here's the side-by-side -side comparison. This is the original Tecumseh HH60 engine. And beside it we have the new Honda GX200QX. And like I said, with uh, when we ordered the engine, what we did was we just measured the diameter of the output shaft, the length of the output shaft, and as well the bolt pattern size and the Honda GX 200 QX is a direct replacement the original engine had shims on the output shaft so we swapped those over and we're gonna we're gonna use the original mounting bolts they thread right in as well so we're gonna get those put in there the original Tecumseh had some power left into it it wasn't uh, blown up still works however it just it uh, it was a little weak, and so it was time to upgrade to a newer engine. The, uh, the Rototiller is a 1980 model, so it's got 30, 35 years of use on it. It's just time to update. So we're going to put this in and uh, mount it up. One other thing to note with the Honda engines, they have the low oil alert on them, which is this yellow wire coming out of the bottom of the block. To this little uh, silver box here. When you put them in a rototiller or uh, other units where the engine's going to be moving back and forth and not stationary, you're going to have to unhook that and just make sure you double check your oil every time you use it. Otherwise, the engine will shut down because the oil sensor is going to be in and out of the oil level. So we're going to have to unhook that. And to do that, we're just going to pop this connector and just disconnect the plug. This yellow wire back here, the gray wire we want to keep plugged in. As you're bolting this onto the chassis, you have to make sure that you leave the pulley out a little bit so that you can get all your holes threaded. As well, make sure that the unit is disengaged so that the tension is off of the pulley. And then you should be able to just start threading all your bolts. As well, make sure your bolts are easily accessible while you have the engine lifted up.
half inch wrench for here. the other two bolts in. Nice thing about the Honda engine on these Troy built tillers is they have the red and white paint job on them. They look really nice. It's a nice replacement for the Tecumseh engines. I know a lot of guys go back and forth between the Briggs and Stratton and the Hondas and some of the Chinese Harbor Freight knockoffs, but usually when I get a piece of rental equipment, every single one of them has a Honda GX engine on it. So if they can withstand rental equipment, I think I'm going to use them on my stuff as well. I've never had a problem with the Honda engine breaking down on me. I've had numerous Briggs and Strattons go down. It's just the same argument between Ford, Chevy, and Dodge. It's whatever you like. So we're using a Honda on this. It'll last my lifetime. And we're bolted up. So all we have left to do is put the pulley on, tighten that bolt down, and we're good to go. So pull this out here. Nine sixteenth wrench to tighten this up. And that's a wrap. When you torque down the bolts around the housing, just make sure you do them in a star pattern. Don't tighten one side down. You could either pull or twist the casing. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, fill it up with oil. Takes a little over a half quart. I usually use mobile. I'm gonna use a conventional oil, break the engine in, uh, run it for about a half hour, hour, and then drain it out just in case there was any impurities in there when they assembled the engine. I do that with all my equipment, and then I'll top it off with conventional again, run it for another hour, drain that, and then I'll probably switch it over to uh, synthetic once there's a few hours on the engine. One of the things that I didn't note uh, everything is exactly the same as far as mounting this to the original Troy belt chassis with the exception of the inside threads that of the bolt that holds the pulley on. Uh, the standard bolt that comes in the Tecumseh is one size larger so you're going to have to get a 5 16 24 bolt that goes into the shaft and holds on the pulleys. That's the only thing that's different about this engine. Other than that, we're ready to go. I'm going to top it off with fuel and then we'll take it out of the garage and fire it up. Here we're going to top it off with fuel.
gonna turn the ignition on. Choke is on, throttles up, fuel's on. out of it. 